Hello, fellow watchers and enjoyers. Ash and Piggy here from Watching Walford bring you Who Done It 2014, the Who Killed Lucy Beale podcast. In the previous two episodes, we have both gotten to the point where Lucy Beale has died and the aftermath, and now we're getting the aftermath of the aftermath. Um, this is going to be week 18 of 2014, or the episodes from the 28th of uh, April. Uh, April all the way to the 2nd of July. So we are slowly trucking through it. May, yeah, May, fucking hell. Fucking I just idiot. looked at our date. I was, I'm accelerating things, you know what I'm saying? It's all right. It's Two all right. months right now. Um, but yeah, 2014, all of which is in this year. The main stories are, and some of these are just sub stories, as is the usual who done it. The main fucking focus is who killed Lucy, but the rest we're going to talk about anyways because it is important. Uh, first, cats at court today, and some little hijinks with her and Alfie, and Alfie being a dickhead again. The usual stuff in 2014. Uh, Sonia and Martin's marriage crumbles. With some stuff with Tina in there, which is, a, you know, it's nice to see uh, Sonia bisexual when the schedule permits Fowler. Um, that's a piggy line, it's not a me line. Uh, and then obviously, finally, we have the Beals struggling. There's been a development in the case where there's, they now suspect that Lucy had a mystery man. So I'll obviously go into that and... There'll be a lovely little segment where we joke about whatever the fuck ridiculous shit that Max does for sex talk. So there we are. If that sounds disgusting, I don't blame you. And uh, switch to me. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting episode of Who Done It because this is two weeks after, two, yeah, two weeks probably after Lucy's been killed. Um, and I know people are going to go, but what's the fun if you know the ending? It is nice to, I know we say it every time, but it is nice to know, we know the ending, and we know some bits of the middle, but we don't know the yeah. beginning. Uh, well, I don't know the beginning. Ash probably knows a bit more of the beginning, the middle, and the end. Like, if I had to guess, he's probably... Uh, I, yeah, I'd imagine movie. I know a little bit more, but fundamentally, it's still a bit of a uh, great, uh, a, a, a blank spot, rather, so... Yeah. Yeah, like, it's not entirely... Like, I've seen bits, I probably know more than you do, but fundamentally, I didn't watch it at the time. I've only seen clips in the aftermath and just know, like, the main fact of this happened, this happened, and then who kills her. But, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean, like I said, our, our whole MO of this channel is generally about enjoying things whilst they're good um, and giving stuff reasonable criticism if it is bad, but fundamentally what we've been covering has all been pretty fucking good pretty much the whole time. We've actually had, we've managed to have quite good luck of, of choosing the projects that we do because we're not just choosing something because it's not notoriously ass in our, in like, in, in watching Walford terms. Like, we started covering, we started covering in 2023. 2023 was probably my favourite year of EastEnders in a long time and obviously we, we're covering and chose to do 2014 which is also a very in like a very excited time in the show where you know you have the who Kill lucy stuff which brought back a lot of people who were a little bit disgruntled a little bit disenfranchised with the show so yeah only only bangers see and if people are wondering what do we mean by we obviously the shit we obviously the the god in the shit it's because on our sister channel, or, well, uh, it's like um, how Cindy Jr. is the Ian Beale. It's our sister mm. channel, but we don't give a fuck about it. Does that make sense, Dad? Um, yeah. It's basically, they got pregnant, and then the father fucked off, so now we're here looking after the child. Um, but yeah, on one more match, basically, for context, we usually go through arguably horrible times where people... Cause, uh, an example is, we've recently recorded a video well, a review of a pay-per-view that's been, tar well, not tarnished, but basically every wrestling YouTuber goes, this is the worst pay-per-view of 2006, blah, 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 insert this, insert that, worst pay-per-view, get the clicks in. And we've recently learned that it's not a bad pay-per-view. There is a lot of 
there's a lot of behind the scenes with it that if we, we we made a video about it but it is it is better than what you would expect is what i would say because yeah. we, we went into it going this is absolutely shit and then we came out of it going actually it's not that bad so that's what we're kind of doing on one more match and we'll also then be doing in august another podcast call uh reviewing another time in wrestling but it, you want that you can go to one more match but well, here we're going to be covering 2014 and yeah there might be some bad might be some bad bits but we'll try and get through it because ultimately the goal is is to find out who killed lucy and i know i know scott's going to type down the comments it was bobby i don't give a fuck what you think mate you listen here we are this is our channel we do what we want on this channel and if you don't like it you can get the fuck out because this is our channel I, I co-own this channel. I get to make a decision. I can block your ass. Whoever comments that. I can block you. But I choose not to. You know why? Because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just saying, fuck you, you little dickheads. Fuck all of you. <laughs> all you haters. That They, they don't exist. <laughs> like, you haven't got a hate comment in months. You haven't gotten any abuse in months. Yeah, on all you dickheads being haters, fuck up. What are you cosplaying as? You get more angry, you get more negative comments from me, <laughs> and that's just part of doing the show. <laughs> Fucking all you haters, fuck off. We don't have any haters. No one cares. <laughs> yes. All the Christmas hype has died out. We're back to we're back to where we were at before Christmas. It's all, and it's fine. We love it. We're having a good time. It's all moving on. We appreciate everybody who still comments and still watches our stuff. So thank you. There we are. Got to, got to have the yin to the yang, you know? All you haters, fuck off. He hate me. Fuck off. Fuck off. Uh, it's but weird. yeah. Uh... Just a side note. It's very weird because it's weird because on one, on one more match, our roles are our first. We're on the more straight-faced one. And Ash just, like, for some reason, something just clicks in his brain. Where it's like, okay, this is the unfiltered channel. I can say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> like, like, it, it, it doesn't say anything like wrongful. Like, this kind of go. See, the issue with the black community, he doesn't say anything like that. He just, he, he just says the most weirdest, wildest things about wrestling when he watches it. Like something just clicks in his mind where he's like, okay, it's my turn to be silly now. You have your fun. I'm watching all of it. It's my turn. You be straight faced. And it's exactly. So, it's so fucking funny because here you have me joke about Bianca being a bitch. Then on one more match, you just have that Ash being like, I fucking hate all the fans. They fucking stink. Fuck them. Fuck them. They absolutely Yeah, hate there them. are... If you want to see a bit more of a... A dial... Bra a dial look, all right. If you're, if you're doing the radio at six in the morning, you're hardly being like, fuck these fucking losers. They're all fucking garbage. You know, you just... You dial it a little bit back, you know. You take back a bit of the edge and you just make it a bit more uplifting. When you're doing a wrestling channel that nobody cares about except for us, fuck it. Everything's fucking, everything's up for up for debate. But I will say, I think one more match has made me a decently better at being funny on this show in general. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's as glowing an endorsement as it can be if you like my humour, which some of you probably don't. Some of you probably do. There's more of it if you like wrestling. Uh, but yeah. Um, there, is, there is a brilliant bit where... It's one of his favorite like shit wrestlers called Kevin Thorne. So, and every time it buckles me, uh, he has <laughs> just start singing his theme. His theme has no lyrics, but just and you can you give us a rendition on this channel. No, it's just it's incoherent mumbling. <laughs> it's, it's incoherent mumbling. It's so funny because I'll just be I, I'm the ECW will be up, and then I'll hear oh hey ho. Oh, hey, ho, oh, hey, ho, from Ash. Exactly. I just start giggling like a child. <laughs> but still, if you want to hear that, that's on one more match. But anyways. Exactly. This yeah, is about well, that, that was a paid endorsement. Yeah. Uh, Piggy's putting £1.50 in the Patreon. Uh, so he gets to plug one more match whenever he wants. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's talk about the EastEnders, though. We don't need to run into the same issue where we do this for about three hours. We have shit to do. Um, but yeah, so the main stories I've said before, but I'll say them again. Cats at court today. Uh, you know, just a nice little finish up. Progression of the cat and Alfie story as they are pre as Cat is pregnant with twins. So through time, we'll get to see how that shapes the family. 
Sonia and Martin's marriage crumbling because Sonia has, uh, as we said before, Sonia is bisexual when the schedule permits. Um, a joke by Piggy. And finally, the Beals struggle in the se- in like two weeks on, still not really getting any closure about Lucy's death. And for people who don't get the joke about fucking uh, about Sonia, it's literally look at the writers whenever. I said one year she's fucking straight in quotation. The next year she's fucking slinging puss. Like, so like it's just like one year she's fucking sucking a knob. Next year she's fucking skinning the cat. Like you know, like yeah. I and you know I it's like we all take the piss. She is bisexual. You know some bisexual people don't f- like like Bianca would say flip flop between. You know, it's just she attracted to attracted to both. Doesn't matter. And if you're out, no one. Can. You love everyone. There is no yeah, love everyone whilst wanting none of them to touch me. <laughs> everyone is attractive and beautiful, but stay the fuck away from me. I, I, I'm uh, let me window shop, but I, I'm 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 never buying. I'm never I'm never fucking. I'm never handling the goods. That's that's not for me. I think Ash was the kid. I'm asexual and I've got intimacy issues, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> there are some problems, right? <laughs> we uh, aren't perfect. And I think I think Ash is the type of kid in school who, like, whenever, like, a kid would come up and slap his hand, he'd get out the little antibacterial spray and fucking spray his hand and be like, get the fuck off me, Jerry. I know where them fingers have been. They've been in the watch. It's cheese flavour. They've been in it. Get away from me. I just like to imagine you were that guy in cold. Exactly, like... don't fucking touch me. Give me my personal space. I like to imagine you were that guy in One cold time cold. I got given a wet willy, I turned around and slapped the fuck... I nearly smacked the fu- I smacked the guy in the face. Was my best mate, which I realised at the last moment. I went, this is a fish, but I just... It was just like... Oh, boom. <laughs> just like, fuck it. Don't, don't touch my ears. Don't touch my face. Leave me alone. He's got... Not interested. Like, Ash has got some lovely years, but I want people to realise he's got some lovely, lovely years on him. And I don't think people realise that until you see him in person. Then, when you see him in person, the ears just mesmerise you. And, I, like, it's just a wonderful thing. Like, like, obviously, Ash would say, my chin is my facial feature. His facial feature is his ears. I'm, I'm getting fucked over by this. It's actually like teasing a bit of the nipple. See, because I've got the headphones on, you never see the ears. So, uh, only your brain can imagine what they are. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, normal stuff. How you doing? How you been? Blah blah blah. We got about two minutes before we actually talk about the EastEnders. Oh, how how have I been? I've been pretty good, but it's it's just how are you been? Yeah, chilling. We're we're back on it. Very tired. A lot of very long days that we're putting in, but I hope everybody's enjoying what we've been up to. So yeah, that's that. Right, it's it's time to get into the East back Enders. in the hydration station. Time to get into the East Enders now. So buckle up, buckle up, lads, because we're about to find out who the killer is. Well, we're not. <laughs> we're not. But we're yeah, we're going to say that every week for like the next year. <laughs> we're going to find out who the time killer is. Time to find is, out is who who killed Lucy, number seventy nine. Bobby Peter, Tony, Jerry, Dynamo. Um, but yeah, let's do the stories. Excuse me. Cat is at court today. Donna's been mouthing off about Cat and Bianca being criminals. Cat has later gotten off scot free and interrupts Donna and Bianca's terror and fucking strips of each other. And she genuinely goes, Oi, you fuckers. Someone's dead, you fucking idiot. Shut the fuck up. Stop arguing. I didn't know her. Yeah, well, shut your fucking mouth, Donna. That's basically what Kat did. <laughs> shut the fuck up, Kyle. Um, but yeah, uh, Alfie, then ha- Alfie then has a stool, but he gets all fucking sad. Cause, oh, well, Kat, I thought we were going to do it together. Why don't you want to have a stool with me? Why don't you leave Bianca and join me? I'll give it up, Kat. Someone else will have this stool. And then by the end, 
he actually gets the motivation. He sells out all his stock in a day. And then finally gets the motivation to keep the stall running. Because I don't really know what they were doing with Alfie at this time. But they, it feels like they wanted to make him like like a more charming version of Arthur Fowler. Where he's just pathetic and he doesn't really want to do anything. But he, he talks a big he talks a big fight. Yeah, yeah, well, I've just been doing everything for you and the kids, care everything for you and the kids. Alfie, you've stood around all day and you've sold two pairs of pants. Yeah, but it's not my fault that the factory shut down. It's like, Alfie, you never worked in a factory. Just, uh, then he looks in the mirror and he sees Arthur Fowler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take whatever you want from that. <laughs> he, he, he was the type of guy, uh, he's the type of guy who would go on social welfare payments um the government's money basically mm -hmm. alfie he's the type of guy who go on like the government's money you know the social matter of payment and they're like we're gonna pay job seekers basically yeah yeah and he, he's the type of guy who went on that but would look for trade anyways so he'd be like, oh yeah, yeah oh yeah he'd still be taking cash and hand jobs yeah yeah that's why i, I mean it was e even during the lockdown you know we had this whole bit about most people just being pricks yeah. I'm pretty sure Shane Ritchie was one of the guys who was, who was like, oh, I've had to do the furlough thing because I'm just not getting work. And then he just did did a bit much. <laughs> did, 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 did a bit much. You know, the furlough with the lockdown, you weren't getting all the money in. So. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, he was like, ah, ah bloody hell. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's like, hmm, all right. I mean, Alfie Moon in like in universe would seem like an anti fat. He wouldn't seem like an anti factor but he wouldn't believe in a fat scene. Does that make sense? Like he would definitely be the type of guy who'd be like, I I don't trust what these people are putting in these vaccines now here though. Uh, he, or or he'd be the type of guy to sell COVID masks and like dodgy COVID tests. He's he's definitely flogging dodgy COVID tests. Like why, why would he need to do it when the government were doing it for him? Oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, I mean, enough of that. Someone, I, actually, people I, got upset. Actually, on that, I had him um, on Saturday. I bumped into fucking these fucking lads. They're, they're always outside on the Saturday, outside Mackey D's. And they're always flogging these signs. You know, these fucking mental signs. The government's lying to you. Fucking all that shit. <laughs> One of them was like, Pfizer is lying to you. Um, the the people who get the facts. I just don't remember. You're some fucking, you're some fuck, you're some fucking weird pricks. You know that, lads. I mean, that's it. They're looking at your son. Like, well, they can fucking look a bit. Tell the truth. Fucking, <laughs> and it's like the RT is lying to you. And I just went, and for people who know, you're gonna look at me and go, "That's a bit weird to say to your father who we went through it." And for people who don't know, that's it. Like that. I just went. You know the guy like during the Trump trial set himself on fire. To prove a point to everyone, yeah, and like then you have all the like uh, what what are they fucking called the eco friendly people where they threw a tin of beans on the Mona Lisa and some shit. It was not a tin of beans; it was orange paint, just of oil. Oh, orange paint! I thought it was a tin of beans, but like, well, why would they? Why would they do a tin of beans? But I went. Why well, if they want to get a if they want to get a footnote in like people to hear them? Why don't they set themselves on fire or throw a tin of beans or something? Like stop all your shit. Like if you if you're gonna make a point, at least try and be out there and actually make a point instead of standing there doing nothing. You know, either make your point or don't make your point. Yeah, um, I don't really know where to take this. You know, we're, uh, we're, we're at a point. We're at a point where you can you can be anti-COVID vaccine. Like fucking, who cares? The other vaccines, though. You know, don't don't sleep on them ones. <laughs> Don't sleep on them ones. All, all the rumours that were, that came out about or, or body vaccism, vaccine, vaccine cause autism, fictionalised by two men who won, who both no longer have their medical licence. The one was an old fucking guy who believed his bone marrow could cure autism. So, you know, that's just... Uh, well, that, that, that movement was all fucking made by... A bunch of bankers, a bunch of lawyers came to these guys and went, "Make a case that or that the vaccine caused autism." We got a big, we got a big money suit like in place, and it was all fucking made up. So there we are. That's a bit of fucking newsflash. Yeah, yeah, I just, um, uh, I'm just, and the rest of it, 
I don't know. It's kind of it's one of those things where it annoys the really. It's like because the, the Just Stop Oil people went ahead and they 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 painted Stonehenge. They did some some orange, not beans, some orange paint Stonehenge. And obviously it, it did what people wanted it because then it's like, why would, why would you go and affect a fucking Stonehenge? It's been there for years. It's a, it's a historical landmark. And it's like, well, yeah, but who gives a shit about, about, a lot of people do, but who cares that much about keeping all these historical landmarks like all the big oil company people who are like, they're ruining our country, you know? I, 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 fuck them. I don't care. I just, yeah. St Stonehenge will be there long after the paint washes off, you know? Stonehenge is going to outlive us all. <laughs> like, Who the fuck cares? Like, I just, like, I believe in the fact that you're standing outside McDonald's. I know McDonald's is being, re being rebuilt because a car bomb blew it up last year, but still. Um, but it, but just it island things. It wasn't car bombed. I just, I, I, I make the joke that it was a car bomb. It wasn't a car bomb. Some faulty car that just blew up. It was some faulty car that just went on fire. And burnt the McDonald's down, sadly. But they stand outside McDonald's like holding these signs. Like, yeah, guys, you're not making a point. All you're doing is like, honk if you agree with our opinion. And you just get people honking. And it's like, yeah, what's it's that, what's, uh, that, what's that gonna do? Like, to, to actually do some. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying like deface the spiral. You know, the giant toothpick that's in Dublin. Like, I'm not saying deface it. But if you want to make a point, don't fucking stand out there with your signs. Actually, go up there, make your point to the government. Do something unthinkable. And again, I'm not saying set yourself on fire, but if you're do if you're doing something mental like that, you're going to get people to notice you. Like I'm not, like I don't advocate for anything like that, but I'm just saying you're going to make a point. If clear. if you're going to do it, actually make a fucking point. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually make the point. Don't just act like you're going to make the point and then not. Yeah, exactly. Deface fucking a painting. Deface something. Like go go in there and smash up the Leprechaun Museum. Why don't you? There is actually a leprechaun museum up in Dublin. It's, of course, uh, there is. It's where all the it was, it's, I think it's where all the like chairs and stuff are made bigger. So like you you get a big chair and shit. So you're in the leprechaun's perspective. It's, it's oh, very fascinating. But yeah, um, it's very fascinating. Okay. It's all this podcast going off the rails again. It's just like um, um, it's just like when when that thing happened in Dublin before Black Friday. Where like this a man stabbed a wife and a child, I believe. So Dublin went into a frenzy and fucking and they, they fucking de they fucking broke into shops, started robbing shit, like blue and they set a loose on fire. Like fuck me, they fucking they went mental. But yeah, sorry, sorry for my little rant. I just yeah, you're making a point. Just going off. Make a point. Actually, do a point. Don't stand there honking. Get your voice hard. Yeah, like protests or some shit. I mean, at least you're doing. At least you're trying. Like, like at least handcuff yourself to a pole and be like, "I'm starving myself." Yeah, unless you, uh, unless you change. So shit like that will get people noticing. People will root for you. Yeah, but uh, that that then you just dive into the nihilism <laughs> and like, ah, oh, none of that matters, and everything is a Nothing. sham. Nothing Great. is changing. <laughs> Great. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers oh. for the nihilism. <laughs> Nothing has changed, uh, guys. Fuck you. Yeah, We're the government. But yeah, let's come on. Let's fucking get through this EastEnders for fuck's sake. Um, this podcast doesn't need to be three hours. I'll I'll take I'll take one. Um, did it do? Alfie, in the end, he sells all of his stock and finally gets a motivation to keep the store running. As we said before, it's Alfie at this time period where it's very strange because he doesn't really want to work. So he's a bit of like a layabout because he's not working at the Queen Vic anymore. Like, I'm just not a fan of Alfie beyond 2005, essentially. <laughs> I feel like the characters are just worn the fuck out. And like Shane Ritchie was never really supposed to like, it didn't feel like he was ever supposed to be there for a long time. Um, but he just became really popular. Like, like obviously, the, the longest he spent was from 2010 to, to 2016. And that was six years. And I feel like... I feel, I feel like, very similar to Alfie, Shane Ritchie doesn't really want to be tied down for too long. Like, he wants to keep constantly, like, doing shit whilst his stock's still high. 
So, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I want to like him, but as it always comes down to, 2018 still existed. And it's very hard to... Very hard to get past it, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Anything else to add with for Alfie? Uh, Alfie's just pathetic at this time. He's been pathetic ever since he got thrown out of the green pick, let's be honest. Yeah. And it's just it's weird, because I understand people love Alfie. But it's just every iteration he comes back, they somehow kick him in the bottoms. <laughs> somehow. Like, he comes back in 2018, kicked right in the... Kicked, kicked, kicked swiftly into the bottoms. Comes back in 2022, bit obsessive. They smash his balls in with a hammer. Like 2014, 2010, when he comes back, it's great. Alfie's back, and then slowly, they slowly start doing CBT on him. And it's just like, oh, oh, oh. guys, I can't. I mean, nuts don't work anymore. I can't. Hmm. I was like, Shane, you can still fucking act. Get up on that stage, you lucky go yeah. chappy. Like, that's how I feel it. It's just... It, the, tire, the character's gotten so... The character's gotten so tired and worn out yes. over the years. Even at this time, I'm like, fuck off. Fuck off. Because yeah. I think it, it's, it's a very it's a very full-on gig, right? You'd be an Alfie, cheeky chappy, kind of happy. Just, ha- just happy to exist. But it's, always, it's hard to fake in this situation. And even in this current run, him and Kat are just kind of farting around until they can get back together. So, you know, like, is the juice worth a squeeze? I'm not entirely sure. Not anymore, at least. But yeah, so that's all the that's all the Cat and Alfie stuff. A very short one. Next up, let's talk about Sonia and Martin. So, we've already established so far at this point in time that Sonia's back, but Martin isn't. Martin's doesn't come back till 2015. And we get to see Sonia. You know, they don't have the best marriage. Martin is also staying true to Arthur Fowler and not being a very good husband and not really taking, like, not even really trying to give a shit or take care of his wife. Um... Tina moves in closer as we don't hear from Martin. He keeps like postponing all the dates and just going out with his mates instead. But Tina calls her amazing and says, you have a great rack. Martin shouldn't avoid it. Just know that because Sonia's now been diagnosed with the cancer gene, which means that she will likely get breast cancer at some point, and she's probably going to have to get a mastectomy. Otherwise, she pretty much will get breast cancer. Um, I will say this. Obviously, they don't really talk about this one anymore because they went, ah, we don't really like that storyline. Let's just let's just forget about it. So none of this really matters too much because they didn't really go through with it. Even if some people probably would have preferred it to have been a realistic one to do. But, you know, so a lot of this week is about Sonya worrying, like, am I a woman if I don't have butt it? Pretty much. Which, I mean, the answer is... Yes. <laughs> yes, you are, Sonia. It's okay. It's okay if you lose your tits. You can have mine, Sonia. <laughs> Piggy will donate some tits. Yeah, I'll donate my move. Um, but yeah. Uh, this, as Jake helps cover Tina's shift, she then... Uh, oh, and then Sonia then catches Tina and Tosh together, and Sonia has postponed to date with Martin. She, Martin didn't want to go. <laughs> Martin said, nah, I'm all right. Sorry, son. Um, Max gets fucking trolleyed in the Vic as her, Carol, and Bianca are all having a drink. And they all ambush her into admitting that Martin is just a shit husband. Tina comforts Sonia about her treatment. She worries about losing her identity. They talk it through as they get drunk on the bench. All this while, while Tosh is like... Oh, isn't this sweet? You're going to help Sonia. That's why I love you. And then, but like you, she just Tosh is just furious at everyone who's getting in her way. So you know, um, Tina calls Sonia beautiful, and Sonia says, "Nah, you're beautiful as well." And Tina doesn't get it because I, I, I don't know if I don't know if Tina's gay is going off. 
you know, I, I, I don't know if Tina, I don't think Tina thinks that Sonya is anything other than straight, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Uh, but but Sonya's like, no, 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 you are beautiful, and they have a kiss. The morning after, Sonya blanks Tina. As much as I enjoy Tina, I still find her comically, like, you, you know some people never grow up. Yeah. Tina never grew up. <laughs> <laughs> like Tina's still acting like a fifteen-year-old teenager at like the age of forty. Like, and uh, you know, I I, I like the actress. Uh, I like Tina as a character. But like the day after her and Sonya share a kiss, Tina stands in the window, is like, "Hello, yeah, Just, oh, come on, you fucking fuck's sake." I love you, but you're embarrassing me. <laughs> you're embarrassing me, Tina. It's weird. Look, it's, you know, I know it's funny. You know when you said like she's forty, I thought you were gonna say like, oh hold on, switch to me so it makes it funny. I thought you were gonna say, oh she's forty and she still dresses like a fifteen year old. When will you have me twenty years old? Fuck, <laughs> fuck it. How's you going, lads? How's you fucking going? <laughs> fucking in the Hawaiian shirts, like, yeah, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm fucking all right now. Look at me. Like, that's why I thought you were going. Man. But yeah, she's. She's a forty-year-old woman who's acting like a teenager. Sonia, love me, Sonia, love me, love me, Sonia. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, I don't know. Like I like her, but you know, so you look at some people and you're like, "Come, but come on! Why are you wearing designer shit? You're fifty. Just, just, just act your age. You don't um, need the fucking Zuma haircut for fuck's sake." I mean, when I'm probably 50, if I live to see that long, if my cholesterol doesn't kill me in my 20s, um, I'll probably still be wearing Hawaiian shirts at 50, which, is, which would look so weird if I actually have kids, because they're like, oh, look, Dad's coming to collect you. And then it's like, your dad's gay. And, and I'd be like, yeah, yes, queen. Oh, yeah. I, I just... I still... Why do you do it? I just still do the hand, the hand fucking motion. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not even, it's never really been a thing. <laughs> and it's outdated by about 20 years. I know. I know. Just say yes, Queen. You don't need to do the hand. It, 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 it's a trigger in my mind whenever I say yes, Queen, because it's just a hand movement slowly moves when, you, when I do it. I can't, I, it's got a mind of its own, just my hand. Um, but, uh, yeah, fucking. But yeah, just also, I uh, imagine you having kids is like some fucking. What sort of fucked up alternate reality are we are we living in? Oh, I like you've got children of your own. Fuck, I I don't fucking know. I don't think I can handle kids. Yeah, credit just... credit to the mum, like fucking or the dad, either or. Credit to whoever, fucking doing an absolute shift to make those kids not be you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like a I say that too. I and I'm not. I'm not having kids. Me. <laughs> I'm, I, I like the idea. I, I'm not. A good, I wouldn't be a good dad. I, I like the idea of a fucking child going. Your dad's so pathetic, and then you just have me in the background going. I know I am. Yeah. <laughs> like I like you know like that joke. Kids always say like your dad, your, your man shags your dad, like shit like that. Like if so, if you're if some child just goes, your man takes your dad. I just go, yeah. Through, through that, she's got a big one. A big one, lads. I'll fucking show you. Why not? Come here, fucking. Uh, don't do that, lads. Don't, don't do that. Keep the kids out of it. But, but, uh, yeah, keep the kids out of it. But, yeah, imagine, imagine fucking us just having children. Fuck me. Oh, Jesus. Terrifying. Little, little ashes running around. Like, oh, Jesus. Little piggies running around. Oh Jesus! I'd be fucking scared of myself. Well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I like if I have a kid, I don't want him to be autistic because I've I've had to deal with it, and I've gotten to where I'm at somehow. But I'm not. I don't. I don't wish that on anybody else. Like fucking, I'm not wishing that on anyone else. I had to deal with my shit. I'm barely here. <laughs> I'm barely existing. I don't want fucking that to happen. Uh, but yeah, there we are. Um, Q and A. Uh, will you ever have kids? 
No. Fucking good luck with that. Um, Someone's like, I'll have kids with your ass. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. And then they're like, what's, uh, what's your age again? You said you were 18. I'm 17. Uh, please, can we disconnect contact immediately, please? Uh, Not a you. joke I'm going to make with recent stories coming to light. About a certain YouTuber with a mustache and a wig. I mean, um, but, uh, so yeah, they Gina says you're beautiful. Sonia, Sonia says you're beautiful. They have a kiss. Sonia then blanks her the next morning. Um, and Tina tells her and fronts her and yells at her, but Tina's too preoccupied with trying to sort out with Sonia. Bianca's yelling at Sonia, and she confesses to kissing Tina. She explains how, I, d I didn't think you've been showing the signs lately, Sonia. It's like, and she then goes, it's not, it's not an illness, fucking Bianca, you melt. <laughs> but yeah, but um, in, in terms of, like, the show, Bianca's up there as one of the worst people to come out to. Because they just, oh, yeah. they, they, not only would they be confused, but they'd be like, just, he's just. Does, does that mean you want to pump me? No. She's no, I don't. Uh, she was definitely that kid growing up in the show. I don't know if Patsy Palm was, but in the show, she definitely was that kid growing up going, you're gay. You want to pump me? No? Okay. thought you would. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Like, uh, honestly, we, 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 we'll find out here in a minute, but Bianca, Bianca, like, I, I'm starting to hate Bianca, and I generally know why I, I'm starting to hate her now. Like, because... I understand being confused about like your sister sleeping with a man one time, then sleeping with a woman, then another man, then a woman. I understand it could be confusing, but it's simple. You just go, all right, you're slinging, you're slinging. That's grand. Fucking get on your get on your horse, do what you want, love. Your body, your choice. You do what you want. You know, that's why that's why the real world needs to realize your body, your choice. You want to do whatever you want to it, you can. Unless it's somehow like you want to turn into a dog. Then I'm like, get a buy a four suit. Uh, but yeah, um, one of those, one of those things where Bianca, she's just a bit of a fucking cow. And that's the whole part of the character that intrinsically is never going to change. But like, there are just, there, there are limits, right? There are limits as to how much of a prick you can, you're allowed to be. And Bianca is always at the threshold, like, bubbling out, like, oh, she's so fucking close. If she goes one step further, she's out, and she never quite goes that far till now. <laughs> till now. Uh, Bianca and Tina, Bian Bianca and Tina, Bianca and Sonia crash Carol getting some wigs. And Bianca is another about it as they see Carol being bald. Carol kind of makes the joke being like, ah, oh, I, I guess you would have thought I would look like Peggy, but I look more like Phil. Fucking great line. Okay. Amazing. Um, Warren Fox then tries to help Tina cook a saucy meal for Tosh, who arrives just as she's with a new flatmate. Uh, new flatmate, Warren Fox and Alex. Tosh then asks Tina to move in with her, and there we are. So now... Instead of Sonia and Tina, Tasha and Tina are moving in together with Warren Fox and Alex, which is the weirdest fucking house I've seen in my life. And uh, obviously, I, 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 actually, I won't because I want to. I, I want to ask reaction after we caught in camera. Obviously, Warren Fox and Alex are talking, and and obviously, Alex. Is like, no, I thought I'd be the one bringing home the girlfriends. Clearly not. And then, like, you just have Warren, like. That's my fucking man right there. Like, it's just like it's just like the fucking straight guy being like, nah, I always thought that Tosh's girlfriends would come to me. It's like, oh fuck off, you little straight bastard. Grow up. Like it's the kind of thing like it's on it. Pussier. It, it, it's kind of unacceptable, but in the same way, it is funny to see how like writers who are straight, right, straight people who who, like, interact with gay people. 
because it's never the most realistic. Like it's never. It's like that old ridiculous trope where it's like, which I'm sure some like toxic masculinity men would actually be like, off oh, or oh, lesbians. Can, can I watch? It's like, well, no, we're not interested in men because you're all disgusting. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well can, can I just sit in the corner? You guys make out for me, please. I'll fuck off. My, They're not a spectacle to be gawped at, you fucking pricks. My, my dad would always tell me, son, and i go, well, you're taking one for the team. And I, I'd hate you though if you are a woman, and I go, and I went, why? Because you, you'd be taking one less woman from me. That's what he'd always say. He, 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 that's, he, look, he has his jokes. He's allowed to make his jokes. Sometimes they fall yes. down his ass. And he, yes, I know he's 49, still. You love to make these jokes. He is accepting. All he can be is accepting. Yeah. He's confused, but he's accepting, you know? He's a, well, yeah, exactly. Never, he's, never. he's still he's still trying. He's not just he's not just decided that it's a stance he's like, fuck these people. Nah, nah, he's he basically said his granddad taught him his grand his father taught him like you don't just accept people for who they have. No matter the yeah, exactly. race. It's the it's money. a great fucking it's a great fucking thought to stand by like it's it like like what, what why are people taught anything else <laughs> i don't know i don't fucking know because people are dickheads that's all I... so is bianca as she says excuse me as she says to fucking uh bianca no as bianca says to sonia oh it's so oh, Essentially, she goes, oh, fuck off, Sonia. You can pick your wig when you get cancer. And it's like... Yeah, you can say that. You didn't get the fucking gene. You... Oh, I can't, can't even say the bad words. You, the you bad see you next wrong. Tuesday. You can't fucking... So, Bianca, making this wig ceremony... Ceremony. <laughs> it is this wig. Oh, fuck. But making this wig thing all about her being loud, being obnoxious... Not fucking seeing that Carol probably needs a bit more support than you just mean mugging the whole time. It's Bianca, who's not got the fucking gene, that means she's very likely to get breast cancer. Just goes, yeah, you can pick the wig when you get cancer. Like, fucking hell. all right, Bianca. Like, fuck me. And obviously Sonia storms out and she's like, oh, it's not my fault. She's been annoying me all day. G fuck off. Grow up. <laughs> I've been yelling at Tina. Tina's not telling people. Fucking fuck you. The the thing that you are currently most scared about will likely happen. Fuck you, Bianca. So they storm out of the house as Carol collapses. Yeah, I Bianca. I kind of like Bianca, but there's always the 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 bad side to Bianca. When Bianca's not happy, nobody's allowed to be happy. And that's not a quality that I like in people. Fuck off. You're not the main character. <laughs> Fuck off. Be I am the talent, though. All me. <laughs> I made the joke that, like, if he was ever a wrestler, I think we've met here, but if, if uh, he was ever a wrestler, his intro would be, hello, I am the talent. And he fucking walk out, like, with a shitty thing. But Bianca, like, uh, just, you. can I say the C word? Just this one. No. You're a bunt. That's what you are. You are a bunt. Lovely. Now that. Go um, on. A funt. A, 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 no, I, how should I do it on the, the, on the show? A, oh, oh. Mm, there you go. Um, didn't say the word. Um, but Bianca, like, it's just, I don't, I understand she's a legacy character, but she's not a legacy character. They just, uh, they're full, uh, she is. She's just a fucking nuisance. Oh, she is a legacy character. I just I don't see the point in having Bianca around. I don't know why they brought her back. I don't know why she's here now. I mean, she served a good role in the Whitney storyline, but yeah, having to sit through her every fucking week is oh, it is annoying. Mm -hmm. It's but like I said, when she's happy, she's fine. When she is not happy, nobody's happy, and that's the most that's the worst bit for me personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's all the Bianca stuff and Tina and Sonia and Carol. Oh. Now it's time for the Who Killed Lucy stuff. Um, who killed Lucy? Uh, who knows? 
and this is obviously once again it's a very more structured notes a lot more notes taken so obviously we'll get through it and there's a segment. pretty pretty so pretty stoically it's a much more hectic segment with a lot more detail starts off peter doesn't turn up to his stall in the morning jane is feeling insanely rough and fe- and is guilty about the kiss shabnam offers to help peter hears the dodgy thing said about Lucy on memorial page and says he'll kill him and do the same, which is actually a pretty fucking good line. Fair play. <laughs> I'll kill him and I'll do the same. Fucking hell, Peter, calm down. It's also like just people are being just so fucking cruel. It's like, ah, oh, well, there's not enough firewood. Not remember to bring some firewood with you down in hell. It's like fucking hell. Uh, Who's not... writing this, Whitney? It's um. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I found it, it's a funny, it, and I, this, the issue is not funny. But I found a fucking, you know, like they're doing a search party for a guy called Jay Slater, I believe. Um, basically, oh god, not this again. Basically, the, 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 this Welsh lad, like, got on a fight, did a video, right? <laughs> and a bunch of like, no, no, they're not idiots. All right, I'll just switch it to us. They're not idiots. They're, they have their best interest, and don't worry, it's nothing bad. Have you checked the local corner shop, lads? Have you have you went downtown and checked the woods? <laughs> like, it's just shit like that. Have you checked the backyard? Have what, you you the just pub? hear all of the fucking nonsense. Like, like, well, uh, it was a guy who... I think he went missing in Tenerife or some shit. Yeah, they said, have you checked the um, backwards? And, and then suddenly all of, like, all of like the Facebook mums who are posting Minions memes still. All of them are like, Oh! My ferret has a good sense of smell. Does anybody have any of his clothes that he can track? It's like, oh, guys, just, guys, just please, someone's gone missing for fuck's sake. And you're like, oh, yeah, I've got a, I've got a guard dog. It's like, oh, just, guys, guys, just shut the fuck up. Like, how how useless is the is the UK public? Or the Facebook mums being like, oh, I don't know how to help. Um, well. I I could make I could make a pasta bake for him. I'll leave it outside, and if he wants it, he can collect it. It's like, yeah, you're helping, aren't you? Like, like I understand <laughs> they mean their best interest. Like, don't get me yeah, wrong. like but it, it is, comes from a good place, but also it is funny, and, and like I'm, we're not making fun of the like situation. It is a horrible situation, but the fact like that you have people being like, have you just checked? The, have you checked the local corner shop? He might be in there getting a bag of sweets. Missy. Have, have you checked the toilet? You might have fallen down there one time. So, guys. <laughs> like, because they mean the best thing. Guys, interest, please. It is. It is if, like, it's funny when you have a Welsh lad who actually screams at it like, fucking hell, lads. What the fuck are you doing? You're not fucking helping. And uh, with these Welsh acts, oh, it's fucking brilliant. Um, but yeah, I, I just, there's, there, is some, there is some good humour in some Facebook times. Um. With, with I'm just happy I haven't had Facebook in years. So. I, I've got five Facebook accounts for some reason. But why? I don't know. I think I just set them all up at one point to play sub- uh, Subway Surfers. I completely forgot about mm. them. Um, for fuck's sake. But uh, it's, it's generally... Like, Facebook is, the, is now the MySpace for modern generation. You fucking... Although... The, you, you do go on Facebook Marketplace. They are selling fucking tables and shit. It's it's funny. It's like table for sale, ten euro. Come on, buy it. I've seen someone sell fake money on there for a fiver. I had like a wad of fifty euro notes for a fiver. Like oh, oh, make me buy it, lad. Walking into the shop, here you go, lad. Here's a five. Here's fifty quid. Um. Oh yeah, you get some interesting stuff on the old Facebook. But continue. Fucking interrupting again. For this. Uh, it's fine. I'm just absolutely spent now. Um, do, do, do. Back into it. Peter, is, uh, Peter doesn't find any help with Lola. He only really finds solace in uh, Lauren. Ian only wants to see Jane. Ian's outraged when they when they want Lucy's body examined for more evidence, but he wants her home. Bobby witnesses Ian yelling at Summerhays, and he says, I don't know where I'd be without you, Jane. 
uh, he's immediately decided that the only way for him to be happy again is for her and J for, for him and Jane to get back together. But she is like, sort your fucking shit out, Ian. Your daughter's just died. You don't need this now. I do love you, but not fucking now. All the teens get together and discuss fond memories as everyone has something to say other than Whitney, who's being a fucking dickhead. It's like, oh, Whitney, do you have anything to say? Nah. Like, just fucking say something really surface level, you dickhead. Just say, like, oh, you know, we may not have had the best relationship, but I could tell that she, but she was always doing it from a good place, you know. She always just wanted me to not make the same mistakes. There we are, done. But instead, Luce, uh, Whitney's like, ah, give me, a, give me a password. I'll delete all the messages on the memorial page. Yeah, well, all right, that's not nefarious, then. You're just getting a password. <laughs> You're just getting a password for something dodgy, aren't you? And she deletes one of her comments. Um... Ian yells at Bobby and keeps wanting to get back with Jane. She says she loves him, but you sort yourself out. Jane breaks down with Shabnam. She could have told her about... But it's, it's, we don't know. We, we assume that she told her about a kiss with Ian, but Shabnam doesn't judge her because, you know, it's, you're, in a, you're in a bad place. Of course, you're going to do some fucking bad, like, bad shit. Bobby heads around and says he needs her, so she ventures back to explain to Ian that her and Bobby are leaving. And remember this... Com remember the conversation that fucking jane and denise had saying look we need to hold this family together and denise sees her leaving and she's like what the fuck <laughs> now i've got to deal with this alone for fuck's sake um which is funny uh masood reels from being left and he's curious as shabnam knows something but she doesn't really want to tell him but through time she eventually does as Denise packs a suitcase, prepares to leave. Denise has a really explosive meltdown in Patrick's arms. Like, she's crying as if she's just discovered that... Like, she she would be crying as if she just discovered that, that Lucas was out of jail and he's coming to kill you. Like, she is, like, hysterically sobbing, which I don't really get, but I get, I get, I get it's the feeling of being trapped and you don't really know what to do. You want to leave, but you can't, like... It's it's that awkward situation where you want to leave again, but you can't. But it's the thing where it's like if if your best friend lost someone he loved, you're just awkwardly standing there eating a sandwich. You don't know what to say. So you're like, "She the football." Yeah, I. Is he the football? Player, isn't it? Oh, you don't like football? Is the hurling? No. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things where she's she's upset because she's still in it and she wants to leave, but she she doesn't feel like she can. But Patrick goes, look, call Libby. I'll call a cab. Later on, you can go and spend time with her. Uh, but also, you should tell Ian. But Denise leaves without saying goodbye. But at the last minute, she decides it's time to go back and let's try the engagement one more time. Lucy's back with some of her... Uh, Summer Hayes is back with some of Lucy's things and they warn them that Lucy's in the papers and it's now suggested and fully clarify that it is now a murder investigation and that she she and people believe that she knew who her murderer was so oh teaser teaser the jungle is massive and it's also said that she was killed somewhere else and moved to the forest which is something we didn't get before either which does add up they're unsure who this, uh, but they also now recognize that there's been a mystery man who Lucy's been texting. It's from an untraceable number, and they're doing investigations to try to figure out who it is. Obviously, it is they're texting like a burner phone, which is, as far as we know, Max. It's Max's burner phone, and I just, I just. I, I bet Max is just awful. Max is just sending the most raw, fucking disgusting text known to man. What was the one you said to me, like, at the start when it, like, uh, is it like, what was it? I feel it, I feel gross even saying it. Uh, jo like, joking that Max is like, keep that pussy warm for me, baby. And then I just, oh. like, ima imagine, like, someone serious, so like, like, when they dig through the text messages, someone, like, serious has to read them out. 
Like, imagine an investigator... Really in in man. court, like, uh, like uh, solicitors, like... And on the 4th of July, you said... Um... He, I don't know, just something lewd as fucking disgusting uh, and sexual. Just again, just like, on the 4th of July, you said, Keep that pussy warm, baby. X, X, X. What could that possibly mean? But yeah, it's just, it's more so, it's more so that the joke of, like, Max is probably sending some gross-ass fucking sex text. Um, that, but... I, I jokingly said if, if Watt was around that time, he'd be sending, like, lyrics from that song. Certified freak, seven days a week, wet and gushy, make that pull-up game weak. Park that big Mack truck right in this little garage. <laughs> That does the noise as well. He does all the emojis. Um, like he 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 probably sends the most dirty, dirty messages. Like I I I like to imagine if he like, exchanged photographs with him. Like so dirty, so dirty. It's not even like it's not even like sexy. It's just like oh. I, like to imagine I want you. I want you to rip off that plaster from my skin and fart in my face. And dig your nails into my back and remind me how fucking bad I've been, Mum. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I, I, like if, if if they exchanged photos, I'd imagine he was he, he had some like tight lips down there, love. XX. Like it was some shit. Like hot that. lips, hot lips, and I'm not talking about the fucking dog. <laughs> well, you can you can make me back like a dog, winky face. <laughs> it's just just gross. I just, just Max is just disgusting at this stage. He's just he's just filthy. In my opinion. You could call me um, Leonardo DiCaprio because you are nineteen and I'm t- I'm forty five. Yeah. I think that's the actor. I think. Uh but uh yeah. Um, anyways, that segment over. A bit gross, but something that still... Everybody feels like Max is gross, so we're allowed to make the probably quite crude jokes. So if you didn't like it, fair enough. It's just, I, <laughs> I like the situation where they have to read out the text messages. Yes. So it's just like what Ash said, where it's just like, okay, Mr. Branning, on the 5th of July, you said, fire in my face and call me a dog. I've been a bad boy. Woof, woof. What Give it to me that? rough, rough. Give it to me rough, rough. You know I like that stuff. Tough, tough. Yeah, it's 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 stripping back these really like disgustingly graphic texts, but in a very sterile environment where you'd never hear it be said otherwise. You you said I I'm a I may be a dog, but you can be my owner. Beat me. What do you mean by that, Max? What do you mean? And then he's um, like, um, I, don't, I don't know, can I get a solicitor? <laughs> I, uh, I, I was horny when I wrote them. I don't like to think about why I wrote them or what happened in my life, why I would have written them. Uh, so I'm going to say that that's not me, that's someone else. You say that... Oh, you, only that last one, though. <laughs> you, 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 I, I've got a tweet here, I've got a text here that says, are you, are you NASA? Because I'm about to put my rocket ship in you. Uh, Max, can you tell me what you mean by that? Uh, if you care to explain. You, you don't want to explain. Fair enough. But we, we, we are a bit sus of you, Mr. Branning. <laughs> just, just shit like that. Like the most crude shit in the serious bodies. <laughs> We've read here you've said some serious allegations here. And we are investigating Mr. Branning. Because obviously they have to call him Mr. Branning, I'd assume. You're up on Maxi, like fucking player. Wee. Lads, slaps him on the ass, going, lads, 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 fucking cheeky bother. Like the, like the South Park joke that they made when, when, uh, when Ike's school teacher was sleeping with him, despite Ike being three and the school teacher being like 33. And like, they, they're going to the police station, and all the police officers just go, nice. Nice. He slept with his teacher. Nice. Like, uh, like imagine a police officer had to do that, like, when they read out the text messages. You think they're gonna give out to you? But they just go. You put your pump down. Nice. You be like, wait, hold on. You're the officer of the law. Why, why, why are you encouraging this? Ah, you know, I want to play. I always play. You know. 
Some but yeah, uh, anyways, this bit's gone on long enough. Uh, do do do. The police have an inkling, but they can't tell Ian who it is. Ian immediately thinks it might be David. Masood then confronts Ian over sleeping with Jane and says, like, just, it's not going to take away the pain with you sleeping with my girlfriend. And it's, you know, he feels bad, but also, I don't really blame him. David points the finger at Max, who acts coy, but he is... You know when someone... You know we joked about how in, like, the previous week, Will was looking like a shifty-ass motherfucker? Where it's like, oh, Will, look at me in the eye and tell me that you are... Look at me in the eye and tell me that you didn't do it, and then Will's, like, there, like, shady-eyed dog, just like, eh, 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 don't look at me, don't look at me, ah, it wasn't me, it was me, it was Gina, she does drugs, drugs, she does drugs, I think, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. So, okay, well, someone's looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. It's... And that's how Max is, because he, he, ha he has a smoke in his mouth, like, fucking, like, 10 out of, like, the 12 scenes he gets. <laughs> like he's chain smoking like a bastard. He he's shifty eyes. He yes, shifty eyes. It, look, if if I'm looking at this in 2014, he's definitely suspect number one or one. I love. I also love how he goes. Yeah, but there was Lee Carter, and it's like he, he's in the army, lads. He's not a wife beater yet. Not until 2017. Or that's because PTSD. Um, that's an excuse, it, of course. Yeah, it doesn't excuse it, but but that's the that is the reasoning. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So and then Lauren finds out Lucy had a coat habit and a fella on the side. All that while Max is consoling her with a shocked Pikachu face, like, "Oh my God, what? No way! Never knew that." What do you mean there All was right. cocaine in the barbers? No way! Never knew that. Wow! So shocked. David then goes probing Max and suspects he has something to do with it. He says, I'm not angry, but I know you did it. I know you killed Lucy. Also, one thing I will just say, obviously David French, the actor. Is he David French? Yeah, David French. Uh, it might be Michael French. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's Michael French. It's French of some variety. There we are. Uh, he was obviously both being, he was also, I'm pretty sure he was in the bill. Was he? No, he wasn't. I'm making shit up. It's just it was just funny to think of just him being a de being a, de a detective. Where it's like, all right, I've fucking seen you. It's not him though, unfortunately. I thought it was for a second. That's someone else. Um, but it's always it's always fun. Like 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 when Jack is a detective because obviously he was in the Bill for like a decent chunk of time before he was on EastEnders. The Bill was like a police soap. So yeah. Um, it's funny when, when these sorts of characters get these scenes where they actually have to be a bit more like, all oh, right, Max, where were you on the night she was she died? And they get to do all the little detective stuff. Good fun. Um, he, invest for, he investigates further and demands to see Max's burner phone. Max doesn't budge, and then he calls his bluff, his bluff saying, look, I will go to the fucking police if you don't admit that you did it. And he says, look, it was me. I was seeing Lucy, but I didn't kill her. He explains how he should have walked away and he knew it was wrong, but he hates that he did it. And David recognizes, look, I was just testing you, mate. Because if you crack this easily through me, you're fucked when it comes to the police. Um, it's pretty, you know, look, you can hate David all he wants. He is actually looking out for Max somewhat. But then he also says, look, if you don't tell Ian, I will. Uh, Max is worried about losing Lauren when it all comes out, but plans to dump the phone. David pleads for him to at least let Ian know it was him. He says, if you don't do it, I will. He falls short of telling Ian and tells Max, if you step out of line, I will dob you in. And Lauren is Lauren comforts Peter, and you can tell that there's a bunch of tension there, while Max figures out how to delete the CCTV footage. And that is the final duff duff of the week. That being the 18th week of 2014. Um, uh, do you have anything to add to this little interrogation bit? I'd love they got the lamp. I love if they got the lamp and shined it in his face. Where were you? Uh, wanking at home. So where were you? I can't tell you that. That's private information, but I was having a bath and I was looking at some magazines. What magazines were they? 
scared to tell you. What magazines were there? <laughs> she Hulk magazines from the 1980s when they grew up very sexy. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, you actually have anything of substance to say? Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 like, I liked it. I like, I like, oh, hold on, I need to fucking fix There we go. Um, I liked it. It was it. It's nice seeing like the who the who people think the suspects are. Um, like some people think it's Matt. Some people think it's more Fox. Some people think it's Lee Carter, who's now out of the equation because he's in the army. Um, where he meets Callum, but Callum doesn't come in until twenty seventeen. Um, also, Lady Dies on holidays. Sadly, uh, the the actress couldn't couldn't come back. They paid her too much. Not yet, at least. So yeah, it's nice to see. It's nice to see progression. We're progressing the storyline. We're leading to more progression. We're going to get there. Uh, we're in May. In about a year's time. We're in May. We've about. <laughs> about... We're not figuring out for a long time, but it is fun to see how it unfolds. Who they're pointing the fingers at, and that is exactly what we do because we dumped off the awards for this show. As now we have the time to go through the top three. Prime suspects. So, if you want to go first with your number three, oh, is there a number three in this scenario? I can't it's think barely. Of I can barely think of a number three. I had to stretch for my number three, so I'll give mine whilst you think about yours. Number three is Bobby Beale. Um, there's a very interesting way to read this scenario. And I say that it, honestly, I'll I'll put I'll put one and two I'll put three and two together because obviously you have Bobby and you have Jane because when she's already like ah oh, I should I should feel like, you know I don't think I I'm allowed the I I feel guilty than I should and is that about her kissing Ian or is it about her covering something up you know is she is this her try is it her face slipping is this her struggling with the realization that she did something horrific. Um, I I didn't know whether to include Jane, uh, Jane and Bobby in this simply for the reason... They also left. They also left as soon as. All right, Denise, we got to hold this family together. Bobby comes running. Okay, we got to leave. we got to leave right fucking now. We're leaving immediately. Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, we know this from hindsight, but seeing the painting being slowly painted and them throwing hints at it, and then seeing the conclusion is mental. Does that make sense to anyone? Like seeing the fact that they're throwing the the paint at the wall and slowly making the painting is mental to see because I just thought randomly revealed like there was no painting behind it. But it's generally nice to see the painting and I am going to give it to Bobby and Jane. I and I again have to bring up the redder. Why didn't Jane do the murder? No one like Jane. She, she had a lot of fans. She had some fans. Um, number two for me is obviously Warren Fox. Uh, he's still number two because he, he he's a bit dodgy, but he's number two. He's not he's not up there as number one yet. And all I can yeah, say is like... Warren Fox is a bit creepy. He's he's helping out the cafe. He's like he's been so lucky, go charmy. Like um, I don't know when Warren Fox leaves the show. I assume... He's not, he's not there too much longer. I can't lie to you. Uh, but he definitely... I, I'd say give it like a month, probably. And then Holly Ox goes, Oh, you're free, you're free, Warren Fox. <laughs> Jack Stone, you're free. Oh, Jack Stone's back in Holly Ox. Woo! Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jane leaving all of a sudden, uh, protecting Bobby above all else, only considering what Bobby wants rather than what she wants, or Ian, or Masood. Maybe her being racked with guilt is because she's done something a bit more nefarious rather than just kiss Ian. That's why she's prime suspect number two. And finally, and obviously, prime suspect number one is Max Branning, who is currently trying to figure out how to delete CCTV about him and he and uh, Lucy's affair. He currently still has his burner, which he hasn't got rid of just yet, and we haven't seen the messages, and he refused to show... Uh, David the messages so all in all Max is looking the most suspicious he doesn't want to tell anyone about the affair because he knows it'll put him first in the firing line but is that a reason to suggest that he may have struck Lucy and buried her in the body because she was buried her in the body buried her in the forest 
as you know there was a high chance that she was that lucy was going to live a life without him and could he not hack it could he not handle lucy living a life without him inside of it yeah i'd agree with that and i think with that uh that conclusion we must end it we are putting our cats hats away now we are putting our magnifying glasses away we are sending it to you who do you think can lucy be do you have any suggestions yeah, I'd equally suggest do it in the same format that we do this segment, because it is a lot of fun to put yourself, to try put yourself in that mindset, like, all right, knowing what we know, not what we know now, knowing what we know at this point in time, who are the main suspects? I think it's a very fun thing to do. So yes, we've been watching Wolford. This has been Who Done It 2014, episode 18. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure to join us in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.